In this video, I'm going to show you a defense that will completely shut down the bunch tight end offense in Madden 21. What's up, guys? Thank, I want to thank you for uh, watching this video. My name is Cody, and our channel here is all about helping people become better Madden players. And every single day, we upload videos that can help you get better on the offensive side of the ball as well as the defensive side of the ball. And so if you want to get better at this game, I just want to encourage you to click the subscribe button at the bottom right-hand corner of your screen. And like I said, in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at some defense that you can use to really shut down the bunch tight end meta uh, offense. I think that this offense is one of the toughest offenses uh, to stop in the game. And so the way we're going to do this is we're going to use um, an excerpt from my nickel 335 wide defensive guide. Now, if you want to get my entire defensive guide, it actually shows you how to stop not just bunch tight end, but pretty much every offense in the entire game. You can get that in the description of this video for just 15 bucks. It's been the best defense all year, and we've been running this since, uh, I believe, June of 2020. So we're literally almost a year in, uh, or right at about a year running this defense, and it just continues to be consistently the best defense in the game. So first tip is you want to sub RB, uh, sub in safeties at linebacker right here to allow them to be able to animate uh, better. And the next thing that we want to do is we want to go into our coaching adjustments and we want to set the following adjustments. What I want to do here is actually um, I'm going to, going to go ahead and take auto flip off. And the primary reason for this is because one of the tactics that people would use uh, to run bunch tight end is they'll come out and gun bunch to the short side of the field and then they'll flip it so that their bunch tight end is to the wide side of the field. So I personally just like to put this off and essentially um, set my defense up to the wide side of the field, whether I'm playing bunch or bunch tight end, it's gonna be basically the same defense. Auto alignment, we're actually gonna set this to base align. And the reason why we're gonna do this is because the bunch and the bunch tight end and really any defense in this year's game, um, if, you're gonna, if you're going to have success, they wanna throw the ball to the outside of the field. And the, any kind of compression set, whether it be tight, whether it be bunch, any kind of compression set, they basically are um, essentially relying on a misalignment to where they can get outside leverage on your zone drops and be able to throw outside of your zone drops even though you've set them. And so by base aligning our defense, this is specifically against compression. You wouldn't do this against spread. You wouldn't do this against doubles. You wouldn't do this against trips, tight end even. Primarily, you would do this against this specific defense and or uh, things like bunch tight end, tight doubles, tight offset, and bunch. So we're gonna base align it so that our zone drops play wider. It's gonna help a lot with corner routes, roll out corners, and roll out crossers. Cornerback matchups are gonna be on balance, ball in our defense to play ball, option defense to conservative. And then the last thing is our zone drops, our flats are gonna be on 30 yards, our curl flats are gonna be set to 10, and our hook curls are gonna be set to 10. This, in my opinion right now, is the best zone drop cocktail in the entire game. It's very, very consistent. A lot of the things that uh, people are doing right now to get over these zone drops, the flats are the best one. So, 3 through 5 wide, we've set in our audibles the cover for show 2, and that's going to be the primary defense that we're going to be utilizing. And so, um, another little reason as to why, I just want to share, share this with you, um, just so you can see. So, another reason why you would do this is we're gonna be primarily running, you know, basically a cover two defense. If they use this motion right here, that circle receiver to the outside, you'll see here that if they do that, that's another reason why you wanna base align. It prevents glitches like that or little motion snap techniques that people can use. So anyways, we're base aligned and we're gonna go down to the cover four show two. As you can see right here, this is the defense that we're given. Now, what I like to do is I like to shift my defensive line uh, to the left side of the screen, just like this right here. I like to crash my defensive line out. This is gonna help against the run. I'm obviously gonna be blitzing my user, and I'm gonna stand behind this, this tackle right here. So if they run inside zone, ideally I'll shoot right through that gap. Another thing that you can do, uh, specifically with uh, bunch tight end, and so something I like to do against uh, you know different types of bunch sets, if you want to, you can use her you know, maybe Redmond or Jackson, but overall, I'm gonna actually be leaving these guys, and again, we're just gonna stick with our primary guy, which is gonna be Savage. We wanna be kinda sitting right in here. Um, you can you can justify shifting your defensive line this direction as well if you want to. Um, it just is up to you, but 
I personally believe that you're going to get a better coverage and better run defense if you shift them, you know, this direction. But again, you can kind of do that as you want to. And then the adjustments that we're going to make to our coverage is we're going to put both of our corners into cloud flats. This is a really, really powerful little adjustment. Essentially, they are going to drop back into playing any kind of corner route, any kind of out route, any kind of crossing route, um, post across the field. These are going to do a really good job. And what it's going to do is it's going to turn these quarters, inside quarters, because we're in a cover four from the three through five wide, it's one of the best, it's probably the best cover four in the game because these inside corners, inside quarters don't get glitched out like a cover four drop would because they're uh, match inside quarters. And then the last adjustment that we're going to make is, or last two adjustments we're going to make is we're going to put the defensive or the linebacker, we're going to spread the linebackers, and we're going to put the linebacker on the left side into a bluff blitz. You see that this is going to put him into a three rec hook zone. This is really important for defending like the delayed fade, for defending really a lot of different types of things that they can do to you. And the last step is to take one of your defensive linemen. Ideally, it would be the X guy, but if you're worried they're going to run, then just do it to the square guy. But as you can see here, this is pretty much the defense. And this is the defense that is going to be really, really effective against a lot of things. Now, of course, you want to pass commit. The reason I like this is because that QB spy, whenever they roll out, um, so whenever the, the quarterback kind of rolls out of the pocket, you're just going to click the right trigger and send the spy. Now, obviously, he runs right into the tight end. The reason this matters is because as he's rolling out a little bit more, he's obviously going to clear the tight end and he's not going to run into him once he, once he, gets, once he really gets out of the pocket. Um, and so the, the beauty of this is they're basically going to really smash down on this guy. This is another reason that could um, give you a decent argument as to why you would want to do something like this uh, right here. And, and then if you would do, if you're, if you're doing it this way, um, then what I would recommend, I still, I really like the adjustment of taking this linebacker on the right and putting him into a three rare hook zone. Um, the other thing you could do, but you really need a spy. That's like the thing. You really need a spy. And the reason why is because people want to roll out and they want to throw uh, crossing routes. So what you want to be able to do um, is you want to be able to simply click your right joystick in and send your spy. Now you see right there, that's what happens if we don't pass commit. If we don't pass commit, um, the, the linemen are going to kind of glitch out a lot of our underneath zones. It's what makes this place so powerful. So really really want to emphasize to you guys that you need to be pass committing on this play um, it's actually really really important so again we can look at a defense you know it can look something like this just make sure that you're pass committing that's like the the biggest thing and the other thing is if you want to you can actually use or the rollout on this because of the how good the coverage is so what will happen is at the snap of the ball once they snap the ball if you just want to kind of loop around right here you can actually get a, a nice user sack this works really, really well. So what's going to happen is they're going to basically just simply block their running back and try to roll out. So they're going to can, in essence, they're going to cancel uh, the play action. And so how are you going to defend this, you know, in that situation? Well, pretty much exactly the same way, um, and it's honestly going to be a little bit easier. So if they don't run a play action and they just roll out, well, you're going to see right here, number one, if you just watch, this crossing route's not open. Um, and there's really not an easy way to get it open because you have to remember that if they're running trips tight end or if they're running um, bunch tight end, one of the things that is really, really popular from these formations is in order to keep you having, you know, Mabel on the left side, is that they're going to run this to the, they're running the crossing route to the short side of the field. So there's just not enough room. Um, if you actually think about it, there's really not enough room. So I can roll out all I want to. Um, you'll see right here, I'm rolling out, rolling out. There's nowhere to go. There's, there's, because the flats drop so far back. And so this is going to force them to have to go to other plays. We're obviously going to be able to take away any kind of flood concept that they can do to the left side of the field. We've got really nice Mabel coverage. This is also why I really, really like um, the three rec on the middle linebacker because another popular setup from bunch tight end is basically this right here. So if we, if we go about our, our business, we set up our defense and we basically have something like this. It's in essence how it looks right here, right? This is kind of what it looks like. So, um, what you would see is you would see something, you know, basically like this. And really what's happening 
is we're really going to leverage this circle receiver. Well, if you watch how this play goes, this three rec hook zone is going to do really good. You see how he just sits on him? And that's oftentimes going to be an interception for you. Now, the reason I like the three rec a little bit more than I like, um, you know, maybe the vert hook, uh, because you could also put him on a vert hook, is number one, the three rec hook zone is going to play the delay fade a lot better. So um, I haven't really gotten you a great opportunity to see the delay fade yet. So let me just show you a delay fade here. So this is just kind of traditional. Um, and if I roll out here, you're going to see that they're sitting right on it. You see right there, they're sitting right on the delay fade. There's really no window for them to throw it. Let me show you that one more time. But in essence, we've taken away the flood concepts. We've taken away you know, pretty much everything that they can do um, from a general perspective. And so what they're going to have to do as an offense is they're going to have to start doing you know, kind of different random plays um, to beat us. And most of those plays are not going to work against this quarter's coverage. But anyway, you'll see here. See how he matches onto him? See how the three rep matches onto him? Now, I know he's still able to complete it sometimes from time to time, depending on kind of how, how everything plays out for you. But I find that the three rec, more times than not, is going to yield you with a lot of interceptions. Another thing that I didn't uh, hit on just yet is the importance, again, of your user being in the area and also the importance of whenever you see... Like whenever you see the quarterback roll out, you really want to click this in. Um, and of course, I'm clicking the wrong stick in because I'm trying to do this with two controllers. But you really want to emphasize um, being able to take away this QB scramble. That's, that's one of the really key components um, of this defense because you're going to see that they're going to basically uh, try to roll out. This is kind of the new meta. A lot of people... Uh, what they're doing is they're just basically like grabbing Robert Griffin, putting the escape artist on him, and just rolling out, right? Um, you'll see right here, though, that's a nice little match that we get on it. And we also have the power of a quarterback spy, so it's going to kind of make that, that clock have to go up a little bit. The only reason I'm saying this is because another situation that you might want to be prepared for is if you really... Um, if you, if you wanted to be a little bit more focused on taking away the delay fade. So remember we put our yellow zones on 10 yards. So uh, what we can do if we want to, uh, this is a little bit better run defense too. Uh, we could take the linebacker on the left, put him in a spy, and we can take the defensive end on the right and put him in a little vert hook zone, just like this. And the reason why this would matter um, is because again, if they delay fade, now you see who they have to double team. Um, for, for us to be able to be out. So same type of situation. If you're sending that quarterback spy, the only problem is, as you see right there, the vert hook gets pulled. Oftentimes the vert hook will get pulled. So you can just put that defensive in the three rack if you want to. The reason that I don't always like to do that is because if the offense goes with something like this right here, um, with this setup right here that we were talking a, a second ago about, this right here, I find that this hitch tends to get wide open. You see, they can just take that and, and just go. So when you have the three rec coming from the left side and your user's on the right side, I find that does a little bit better. The three rec hook zone will still drift over to the delay fade, defend it really, really well. But what you'll also have is you'll now have the ability to be able to stop the hitch on the left side, and then you can just user the hitch on the right side if you need to, if you're in a situation where they have hitches on both sides. If they don't have hitches on both sides, that three rec will take either side hitch, primarily because it's a linebacker. So anyways, I want to thank you for watching this video. This is how I would defend Bunch tight end, at least at this point in the season. And if you want to get my entire 335 wide defensive guide, I believe it's the best defense in the entire game for a plethora of reasons. It's been the best defense all season long. And we've been using this defense for about a year. So we've got a ton of experience in this defense. And if you want to learn exactly how I would recommend that you run this defense, you can get my full 335 wide defensive guide in the description. Thanks for watching.